Hi, and welcome to this video on how to create just one report, but actually giving your users hundreds of reports. Hey, my name is Eric, and in this video, we're going to play around with the concept of custom report layouts. So a report in Business Central is basically in two separate components. We have the, the report, the business logic that produces a data set, and then we have a layout that consumes the data set and renders a PDF or Word document and so on. Uh, and Business Central had the very, very cool ability that you can on the fly actually switch the layout. Uh, and in this video, we're going to use that exact uh, feature to um, enable us to create one report then, but attach a unlimited number of, of layouts to it. So let's get into it. Here is my trusty old Visual Studio code. And um, we need to create a report. And the easiest way to get create a report is to use the uh, uh, AL file widget. And we will do a report here. This is a function out of the ASET AL uh, extension for Visual Studio Code. I did a video on that, so uh, you can uh, you can go see that one if you need to. We'll call this report for the, the multi-report because that's a cool name. And we'll just run it on, on the customer table. Um, I will add all fields to it and behind myself, down here somewhere, right there is the finish. I'll click that one and I get a report. Um, let's add a usage category to the report and an application area. And we can see that, oops, there's already three box in this report. Um, and the reason for that is that there are a couple, there's a couple of fields that are marked for removal and uh, let's just remove them then. One is a text area display name. Another one is the ID replaced with the system ID thingy. And the last one is the picture blob that is replaced with the image uh, data media set field. So now we have a report, that's great. And this report do not have layouts. Um, so what happens if I run the report? Let's do it. Let's run the report. And I can delete some old session I had running. Well, let's see report 50, one, two, three did not exist. So actually let's go back and see what number we gave our report. 5100, let's scale in one, two, three. So the reason for one, two, three is that in launch JSON, I specified that my startup object type is actually report and, and this number. So let's try it again. See if uh, this is better. Remember, I just created a report. I did not create a layout. So let's print this one. And we get a blank report, exactly what we asked for. Okay, so let's visit something. So custom report layouts. So in custom report layout, you control what layouts you have to report. You can have more than one. And let's go down to the end. And you can see here that I actually cheated a bit and started this and created two layouts. So if we now, so this is on this report number. So I already went in and created two word layouts. Um, so if we say process run report, now that we have selected one of the layouts, we get, and, and the reason for the little dialogue was that we I recreated the uh, objects. Um, so this is the default layout, this is changed. So somebody was like, that was me, change that one and let's process the other one. And this is the second layout. So we have actually two layouts that now works on our report. Um, and we can we, we can see that Business Central is able to run the report 
with the different layouts on demand. So the only thing we need to do in order to make this a uh, fantastic user experience is that we need to incorporate that change of layouts into our actual repo. The last place we can do that is actually the very first trigger a, uh, there's in a repo called, called on init report. So as soon as the report object is, uh, is run, this is the first trigger that's activated. And this is the last trigger. As soon as we pass this trigger, the layout selected uh, is the one, to, whatever has been selected, that's the one the repo will go with. So how do we select the layout? Well, it's actually pretty simple. There's a, a table called the Reout Layouts Report Layout Selection. That's way too hard for somebody like me. Report Layout Selection. Um, and this table have a, um, a function called set temp layout selected. And we just need to specify a new layout. So how do we do that? Well, if we go back and see the layouts we have here, uh, it looks like the primary key is the object number of the uh, of the repo, but that doesn't really make any sense. So let's turn on the page inspector. Our good friend, the page inspector. Uh, and now I'm in the way. So you can see that the first one is actually the repo number dash. 000001 and the second one is the report number that's 0002. So that's actually the primary key and that's what we need to feed into that function. I'll just put myself back in the corner before I forget. Um, so we need a way for the user to select something like that and let's, let's simply add a, um, create a select layout page. There we go. Uh, let's use the same number, select layout. I know there's a built-in page that kind of does what we want to do, but I prefer to have this contained in, in, in the app and not rely on a, a standard page working. So the page type is list. Um, Users category is none. Source table is the custom report, custom report layout. And we better not allow anybody to edit this. We need to add a layout, an area, the content area. Then we need to add a, re a repeater. And in the repeater, We'll just add the description field at a application area. There we go. And we have a, a selection page. Excellent. So let's go back to a report and say, so we, we need to know what layout we actually have created. And I'll, I'll create a new global variable. This is one of the very, very few times you will actually see me create a global variable because usually it's bad for everything. But in case where you have something on a trigger that needs to go somewhere else, and I think we should actually show what report we have, uh, what layout we have selected in, in, the, uh, in the request page. So um, I'll go with a global for here and you can mark me for it. Uh, so let's add a filter to that on the, the report ID because we only want to see the layouts that's connected to this. Uh, so if page run modal, and it was the same number to make it easy, layout. Uh, so as soon as we call a run modal page and check for the return value, the page will act as a lookup page so we can see if it returns action lookup okay. If that's the case, then this is what we wanna do. And now we just need to find that code field. So it was layout.code, there we go. So now we have, oops, let's see if I can get something. So now we're looking 
finding the um, the layout and we're setting the layout we we found so what what if we select a cancel then let's just uh, please select a layout to continue there we go let's see if this works f5 So those are the two layouts I had. Let's try the second one. Preview. This is the second layout. So with basically with very few lines of codes here, we, we create a repo that when you run it, it will ask what layout to use. And then we select the layout. So, so the only thing we need to add here to make this a pleasant user experience is perhaps to give the users a way to uh, to get new layouts um, and let's do that on the select page so we'll we'll add some actions here uh, let's first add an action how to to edit the layout that's perhaps the only thing we want to do so let's add a area but you see how that that's processing, right? So action, let's call it edit layout. Caption equal edit layouts. Because there's actually more of them. Application area all. Um, image, let's see if we can find an image that's edit. Uh, Let's use edit document edit. That's a nice image. Uh, Tooltip edit uh, the report layouts. And what we want to run is actually the page called custom report layouts. And let's just add a run page link here saying that report ID has to be the field of the report we are on. So if we did not have any layouts and then the first layout we would have to create some somewhere else uh, let's promote this so let's oh that's only one uh promoted category is wow this is late process promoted is big true promoted only true there we go I think I managed to write it all. So let's hit a five. See how our report is doing. Okay, we got an edit layouts and we see the two layouts. So let's do a new one, new Word document. So let's call this the, the YouTube final test. And we'll export the layout. Open it in Word. And now we just got a blank document because remember we did not put in anything. Um, so in order to edit a work, work, in order to edit a word uh, custom layout we need to have the developer ribbon activated if you don't have that in your word you can go to customize right click and then customize the ribbon and check the developer ribbon so you got that when you have the developer ribbon you got something called the xml mapping pane and in here you can find different xml schemas the one we're looking for right now is the one called dynamic nav I don't know why it's called nav and not bc um uh, somebody from microsoft can probably give a good explanation of that anyway we got our multi-report here we got have all the fields in uh, uh in the customer table so 
this is the the final test for the YouTube video. Hello. And then let's insert the name because that's a really, really clever report design. Uh, there we go, there we go, Rich. And and we can we can bolt that. Hello name from and then that at the city because this is it's a plain text. There we go. That's an awesome little um, template. We save this, and this is this is where users sometimes get confused. So now we have just edited a file, we saved it. Everything is good, but it's just a file that's saved on your local drive. So we need to go to layout and import it again. Now this one is ready. So let's actually just, we can just run it from here. No, sorry, we were in it. So I'll just press escape. And the new layout is now ready in our selection. So I press OK. And there you go. This is the final test. Hello, a datum from Winnipeg. So remember, I created that as a global variable. So I actually wanted to, let's, justify that I use the global variable variable in order for you not to be able to mock me as much for that. So let's go into the request page and add a field called layout. Um, and this should be be layout dot description. Caption would be selected layout selected layout uh, application area equal all edible equal false wow okay let's run it one last time select the third one and we have the selected layout so select the printer select the layout this looks nice let's try to run it bam there's our third one so um, now users can just go and add their own reports their own layouts uh, and and the um, what what I've seen so many times that you you get out to a, to a client and they have a whatever document that might a report that might be and then they have 25 versions on it because like it's the invoice and and, and this guy needs that layout and that guy needs a lot of layout you can you can actually control that by by adding uh, on, on a customer card you can you can select what layout they want uh, but in in other examples where you have the same report but you just copies of it with this, you can have the copy part. If the data set is the same, you can have the copy part just in the layout. So with a, let's run this video off with just a few lines of code. We created a, a report where you can actually select what layout you want on the fly. So if you like videos like this, or you think I did it all wrong, subscribe to the channel and, and comment down below. And let's, uh, I, I try to reply to everything. So, uh, let me know if there's something that you would like to see me do or something you think I could do differently or better. Or if you want to talk to me otherwise, look me up on Twitter or anywhere on the on social medias. And um, until next time, have a wonderful day.